Hello Stitchers, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another Flosstube episode. This is Flosstube number 82. Welcome back. It is Sunday, April 28th, 2024, and I hope everyone has had a wonderful week. I have a jam packed jam-packed episode for you guys today. I have some FFOs. I have a finish. I have stitch along progress for our seasonal Biscornu uh, Flossiversary Sale 2024. I have another whip progress to share. I have some stitchy kindness. I have a tiny bit of haul and then I am going to share tomato charts with you that I have in my stash and we will talk a little bit about maybe what I should stitch next. Plus I have the results from the pair poll that I put, what pair chart should I stitch next time? Um, and I even have a new start on that. Plus we're gonna talk about progress going forward with pair stitching. So if that is something that sounds like fun, please stay tuned and as always, Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for spending a little bit of time with me. I absolutely love this community. I love all of you. And this is such a fun video to put together every single week. So, or most weeks. I do try every single week. <laughs> um, so uh, let's jump into today's episode. As always, I do go ahead and try to list and link everything that I talk about in the video down in the description box below. So check that out. If at any time something catches your eye, you want to know more about it, I should have a link down there. If I don't, drop me a note and we will get that information for you. I also put timestamps down in my description, so it makes it easy if you wanna come back and check out an FFO, a finish, a chart that you think that you remember me talking about, or you just have heard giveaway winners, or you a friend told you, hey, I think you want a giveaway, you can find that information, hopefully quickly and easily that way. So let's jump in to FFOs today. So FFOs, I did, I have two. Well, there's four pieces, but two different FFOs. The first one, I finished my spring green pears from Annie B's Folk Art. And I did hear you guys, you would like a video tutorial. Look for that with the blue work pears, okay? I thought I might film one. I decided I'll stitch one of these pears. I'll see how it goes. FYI, it took pretty much all afternoon in the evening. I didn't do any stitching the day that I worked on these because I literally tore one of them apart three times. I found some things that worked for me, some things that didn't, and I am glad that I just opted to not. I thought I started to film at the very beginning and then I could quick I quickly realized that was not going to work. So when I do the blue work pairs, I will film that one for you because I definitely love how they turned out. I'm glad I just settled myself down and took the time to stitch them. So I have finished all of mine. They do have felt on the bottom. Lots of hand stitching. Lots of hand stitch love went into these. Um, I love 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 how they turned out and we are going to talk all about pairs and pair progress and kind of my plan to stitch pairs um actually right now we'll we'll go ahead or maybe i'll talk about that when i talk about my new start but let's flip the camera around and talk about these pairs so spring green pairs these were a very quick stitch for me i stitch all of these basically in about a week um, each of them took anywhere from two to maybe three, three and a half hours to stitch, depending on the stitching. I love them. This is the newest pair chart. We did talk all about those in last week's episode. I will link to that episode down below. I will try to link it up here in the corner for some reason. That's not been working great. If I can get it to work, I will do that. But we talked all about the different pair charts and kind of plans going forward. I did finish mine 
obviously, as you can see here, and is this the one that I had to tear apart three times or was it this one? I think it was this one. So I followed for the most part, there are directions in the chart. So I can kind of show that. So you do get directions in the chart. I followed it and I followed it pretty close, but there are some things that worked really well for me. Now, the first thing that was difficult for, for me, and this is just like a personal thing, was finding the right fabric. So this fabric collection is actually a collection. It's a pretty new collection. It's from um, Laundry Basket Quilts for Andover. And these are the three, I did get a fat quarter bundle of it, but these are the three patterns I chose to use for my pairs. And I wanted to talk about that. I feel like this agave linen that I used was a little hard to match. So what happened first was I stitched one of these. I used a different fabric, a fig tree fabric. It was not right. It, it wasn't terrible, but it just wasn't, it wasn't saying to me, yes, this is the one, right? Um, and then I remembered, I actually picked this up on a whim and it's beautiful. But what's funny is the blues I think are in this collection are going to work for the blue work pairs. Um, and then there are, there's, it's got pinks. It doesn't really have reds but it has some other colors. I may have to, you know, go outside of this collection for the red, which is fine. Again, we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but this collection for the greens and for the blues worked well, and it's a current collection in case you're interested. The patterns are absolutely beautiful. So I used kind of this green floral print for one of my pairs. That's this one. I used this beautiful kind of taupe and brown print. They didn't really have another green. I'm thinking they did. There wasn't another. Well, there were, but they were more solid. And I didn't want to do too many in this. I wanted them all to be different, but similar. Does that make sense? And I kind of liked this. So I went ahead and did this kind of taupey brown floral. And then this cute little pin pattern on the lighter green. And they just look and work together so, so well. Stuffing wise, let's talk about that. I did use my sewing machine to sew up the seams. So sewed my two pieces of fabric together. Then I sewed them to the linen, leaving a little hole here. There is kind of a little hole up here where it meets. I will film the whole thing when I sew it. And then I stuffed it. Now, when I first stuffed it, I used wool roving only. And I tore that one completely apart. I actually stuffed two of them. And I stuffed them completely with wool roving. I did not love it. So what I did was I pulled them apart, stuffed it with the top, like I stuffed from the bottom down to the top with wool roving. Then I filled them with crushed walnut shells. The same thing I'm using for my seasonal biscornu, for, for the biscornu sal. That is what I ended up using. And then I finished down at the bottom with more wool roving, kind of rounding out the bottom of my pair and kind of sealing in the crushed walnut shells. Now you will need to put something down here at the bottom. I did pull, or like pull, I sewed up kind of lacing style. There is a hole under here. So you're going to need something to cover that. And I just used some wool felt, which is what the directions call for. And that worked really well. My stems are wool felt. The leaves are wool felt. There is templates provided in the charts. I did choose to do some stitching for the veining on my leaves. And then I kind of pulled my stitching so it would gather them up and they wouldn't just flop out flat. I did not like how they looked. I, okay, so here's another fun fact why it took me so long to do this finish. I went ahead and put the leaves on and without any stitching and I couldn't make them look good. If you knew how many things I tried and then finally I was like, don't be dumb, just stitch the, <laughs> the veining on, do a little pull at the end and it's going to gather them up and give them this natural, more natural look. I love it. So that is my leaves. And then I did do the herringbone stitch down the side. And to me, that just finishes it off 
perfectly. So beautiful. Look at that. Lots of hand stitching, lots of love went into these pairs. Now, a couple of things. I definitely feel they're called spring green pairs. Definitely springy. Definitely will work great for that. Do I only think that they'll work for spring? No. I also think maybe combined with the red pairs at Christmas, they would make a beautiful display altogether. I know one of you mentioned that in your comment, um, either here on YouTube or maybe somewhere else. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's such a good point. So um, con consider that uh, mixing and matching your pairs. I even think all of the pairs like in a bowl as a huge di pair display would be super fun, but aren't they cute? I want to hold them up like this so that maybe you can get even a better idea of the size. Hand stitched except for the seams on the uh, fabrics themselves. So hand stitching the felt to the bottom. Also gathering down here at the bottom. Gathering, hand stitching, hand stitch the felt on, hand stitch the leaves, tack those on hand stitching, rolling up, maybe I'll flip around, rolling up the felt stem and stitching that and then tacking that down in place and then stitching on the herringbone stitch. Now I did follow the directions, but I did quickly realize I like to change, well on the first one, I like to change the order of the directions and so that's what I am gonna show you when I do my blue work pairs which to me are very much the summary type of pairs, summer. Not like the summary of the, the story, <clears throat> excuse me, but like um, summer time <laughs> type of pairs, um, if that makes sense. These are my pairs. I love them. They did take a little bit of work, but it's worth it. I know I've mentioned this before when I talk about finishing, but take your time with your finishing. You will be glad that you do. You took all that time to stitch. I will say it probably took me as much time, you guys, to finish these as it did to stitch these, which is not usually the case. And I do think going forward, it will be a lot easier because I've learned some things that work for me. Um, it did not deter me from making more pairs at all. In fact, it really lit a fire and I'm very excited to work on the rest of them. So these are my spring green pears from Annie Bees. Um, and if you like your finishes, they're going to sit up better too. Put, put walnut shells in them. Use stuffing, but use a mixture for these. I think you will be happiest and stuff, stuff, and stuff some more. This is this one's stuffed the best, in my opinion. I think this one, which one did I do last? This one, I think. And it probably could have used some more walnut shells, but it's good. They sit up so much better, in my opinion, with the walnut shells in them. And they have a little weight to them, so you can really kind of display them however you want. Okay, those are my pairs. Super excited to get these out. Um, I just think they are so beautiful. And I will link this fabric bundle if it's still in stock, but I will list what it is down in the description in case you want to look for it somewhere. My second FFO today is a partial FFO. So I have been talking about working on this hands-on design tomato tomato chart, and I had the tomato all stitched. I am still working on the tray, although that should be an FO and hopefully an FFO before next week. But I was in a finishing mood, so we finished the tomato. And it is adorable. I did get the finishing kit from Attic Heirlooms. It, I haven't looked to see if it's still in stock, and I don't know if they will restock it, but you just need some green wool. You can find any kind of pins. I keep meaning to do like an Etsy search to see if anybody does these little wool strawberries, but the instructions do come 
Uh, there's a link to them in the chart. And Kathy does a full photo written tutorial. It's excellent. Just follow it. You will be able to stitch it up easy peasy. This also has a little piece of wool on the bottom. Underneath is a magnet. There will be a magnet in the tray and it's so that this will stick right into the tray and not go anywhere. You don't have to add that if you don't want to. Maybe you just want to do the tomatoes. Maybe you want a whole little tomato collection. But um, the instructions are fantastic. I know somebody asked if I would do a tutorial and I won't. Kathy has one. So no, I, I won't do a tutorial because she does have one that you can you get when you purchase the chart. There, Like I said, there's a link to it. But super easy. This actually came together so fast. I'm glad I did this first. Then I dived into the pears and didn't love my life that day that much. But I took a deep breath. I went and got some food with my son. And when I came back, I was able to finish those. He laughed at me. He was like, Mom, how many times have you pulled those out? Phew. A few times, son. <laughs> so that is my little tomato. Isn't it cute? I am loving it. And kind of my rule, you know, I'm not much on rules for cross stitch. I feel like you should do what you want to do. But my rule here, and it's the same rule for my pears. This was my tomato stitch. I've got a bunch of tomato charts to show you from my stash. This, when this is done and FFO'd, it doesn't have to all be FFO'd, I suppose, but I want to get them I want a whole display here in my craft room, which I'll be sharing soon, soon. Um, I want a whole tomato display. So when this is all done and I've stitched the tray up, I'll move on to the next one. And we'll kind of talk about that and all the different charts and such. But um, I love it. I kind of like ha the idea of having just an ongoing tomato project, an ongoing pear project. And I don't have as many pears. So that probably will end fairly quickly. <laughs> but tomatoes, I, I kind of like the idea of just being able to pick one up when I feel like it. I have no set schedule or goal or anything like that, just that I want to add to that collection for display here in my craft room. I have a lot of seasonal fun things, and I would love to have a little a whole little soy tomato display here in my craft room that is just for this room. And so I'm very excited about it. I love it. I love it so much. How cute. Give me all the tomatoes. I, I think they're really, really fun. So that is it for my FFOs today. Let's talk about a finish. I was in a mood and I decided let's finish something that's close to being done. And so I picked up the Hands-On Design Liberty Pennies. I was so close to being done, you guys. But with the sow starting and, and so or stitching all the biscornus and everything like that, I had set it aside. Well, I decided to go ahead and pull it back out and get it stitched. So this did not take me much time at all. I only had, I think, a little bit here and like all of this right down here and maybe these flowers, but I literally just stitched on this until it was done. So I picked it up kind of after floss tube last week, worked on it only like one evening and a partial part of the next and it was finished. Ready for patriotic finish and display for this year. I'm thrilled. I have an idea how I want to finish. I'm not 100%, so I'm not going to share. I did stitch this with all of the called for Weeks Dye Works threads, and I stitched it instead of on 32 count, which I think this was stitched on 32 count. Mm, I, of course, didn't bring it in here. It's, it's a black fabric of some sort. I think it's Slate by Fabrics by Stephanie, if I'm not mistaken. I stitched mine on... 36 count charcoal linen by Zweigart, which I love. I love charcoal. I think I like it better than black and I love how it almost has a bluish tone to it. This is also what I stitched this guy on. So I just think the colors pop on it. So, so pretty. 
So that, that's the winter basket, Biscornu. So that is my Liberty Pennies. So pretty. I'm addicted to all of these. So, so exciting. So that needs to be finished, but look at that. Look at the colors, you guys. Absolutely gorgeous. I really just want that kind of little display in my own home. I think it's so cute. And it doesn't take long to stitch at all. I don't. I just set it aside, whoops, because I was working on something else. But I think these little rounds stitch up fast. And that is my only, my only finish finish for this week. Okay, so let's move on to whips and then we'll talk about new starts and some other fun things. Let's talk about whips as far as the seasonal Biscornu Sal and do a little update on that. So I'm going to do that first because I do kind of have a finish, but not an FFO. Um, and that is, I am working on, while we're doing these, the sal in real time, I'm stitching the summer basket and I'm actually going to stitch all of the charts during the sal. We have three weeks left. We're starting the third week right now. And I am going to show the one I finished stitching first. So I stitched this guy right here, the middle pillow the middle chart, I guess I should say, since mine's gonna be a Biscornu. This is on 40 count flax linen by Zweigart. So this, it, I finished stitching this. By Wednesday, this Biscornu will be completely finished and I'll be sharing it with you guys during the stitch with me and then I'll show it again next week in floss tube if you're not doing the stitch with me uh, and you just wanna see this. And I talked about during the stitch with me last week that it does take me there was a quite a few questions and one of them was how do you know what you want to stitch on the back you can copy this exactly you can stitch one on the front one on the back literally it's however you want to do it what's funny for me and this is what i mentioned during that is that i often as I'm working on the top, I maybe don't have an exact plan for the back because it comes to me. And it was not until I was finishing up these stars, these were my final two stars in this one, that what I wanted to do came to me for the back. So this is going to be the back, uh, or the bottom, pardon me, not the back, the bottom of my Biscornu. And I am stitching the same chart but I am flip-flopping the colors and I will only stitch the four corners. I'm not going to stitch the full thing. And I have talked about that and why I do it that way. If you think you want to flip-flop yours, for sure stitch the whole thing. There's no right or wrong. I am going to display mine flat. And so because of that, I don't feel the need to fill in the whole area. However, where the corner comes up, and I'll show you on the winter basket. This corner, these corners kind of go down, the bottom corners come up. You want something here as a little decorative part. And because of that, I'm I thought it would be fun. I thought at first I would just stitch them exactly like this. But wouldn't it be cute that every other and that's where the idea comes from as I'm stitching. Wouldn't it be cute if it goes blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, so on. So I flip flop the colors, all the same colors from the chart. I will uh, do a, when this one is finished, I will do a social media post and I will list out exactly how I did it because I am still working on it, obviously, but I should have this one stitched up, probably share that early in the week because super cute. So this obviously is the 40 count. That's kind of almost a finish. Just got to get the back. Here is where I'm at on my 32 count. So this is the one that I'm actually stitching, you know, real time with you guys. The rest of them I'm trying to get done. I haven't started 36 yet. By the time I see you guys Wednesday night, I will have started. So I am stitching on 32 this one. And then this one I'm going to stitch on 36. And um, that one's, I already know how I'm going to stitch the front and the back of that one as well. 
I think this one, I'm going to stitch it exactly the same. But again, I don't want to tell you for sure I'm doing that. Oh, no, I don't. I did have another idea. I need to see if it works. Um, I will also have that like prepped because we are going to start working on the bottom of our Biscornu this week. And I will tell you exactly what I'm doing. I have an idea. Anyway, this is where I am. It's going fast. I just need to finish stitching these corners. And then I did start the border because I started that live last week, but I will finish it this week live. And we're going to talk all about that again in detail, as well as starting on the bottom of our Biscornu. So that is my progress for the Seasonal Biscornu Sal 2024. I am so grateful that you guys have been tagging me um, in your posts. I still need to get to more of that, but it is awesome. So keep tagging me, keep letting me know, um, you know, or show me your progress. I love seeing what everyone has chosen to stitch as far as what season, super duper fun. So my last whip, which should be a finish by next week and hopefully an FFO, is the other part of the tomato tomato chart. This is stitched on 32 count gray linen by Weeks Dye Works and I'm using all the called for. It's just five colors. I love it. Um, I stitched from the O to this T in an hour this morning. Um, so I would say I have maybe two hours left because there is quite a bit of color change and stuff. I My plan is to have this stitched and then to go ahead and FFO it and I have my first tomato chart done so I can pick something new from what I'm going to show you. And so because of that, I feel like we should do another poll. You guys were amazing last week with the pears. So that was super fun. Look at that. Isn't it so pretty, you guys? I love, love, love this. I can't believe that I've had this for, I mean, I bought the kit and everything when it came out and I can't believe I let it sit for this long because I love it. I, and it's fun to stitch on, all of that good stuff. So here are my colors. It's all week's dye works for this as well. And that's how it's gonna look, isn't it cute? Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm just, I'm loving stitching on this so much. All right. Wow, it looks like a hands-on design party today, doesn't it? That's kind of funny. <laughs> um, so my monthly stitching, I have two things. I ha First of all, I have my Moment in Chalk, which also is hands-on design. Uh, haven't even started April stitching yet. I have just a few days left, so I better get on that. I'll have that to show you next week. Um, and then my Sheet Virtues, haven't picked that up again since I started. So I'm going to stitch on that this week and have that to show you next week. So I know for sure those are two things for next week. Plus, I want to show you what I've pulled for my first patriotic stitching for the year. I'm also going through whips and seeing what's, what whips do I have that are patriotic, like Liberty Pennies. I mean, that was kind of a newish start, but I'm going to go see what I have, see what I need to work on. Um, and then I'm going to show you I've picked two well, it's technically three, but I've picked two projects um, that I'm going to do or start first for patriotic stitching. You know, I don't really have a whole lot of rules, but I've kind of liked this. Um, I, I pull everything and then I stitch and I stitch something. And when I finish it, then I can do the next one. I can pick another one. I don't really like have them in order, but I can just choose the next one that I want to stitch. So I'm kind of thinking I'm going to start these two patriotic stitches I'll share with you guys next week um, for May and then, you know, work on them until I get them done. It's really fun that way. All right. I think it's time for a new start. Uh, and we're going to revisit the pairs and talk about what I think I'm going to do for pairs going forward. The other fun thing I did, I didn't know if I would say this anything about it or not. I haven't made a for sure plan. I did do a brain dump the other night when I was just laying in bed. You know how you do. Um, it's kind of been funny just how I've been drawn to dimensional finishes. I've mentioned it multiple times. I actually went through my charts mentally. I didn't even go through my binders, but I made a whole list of things I'd like to touch and do 
for this year. So that's fun. And I may eventually do a video where we just talk all about those. Um, so we shall see and maybe kind of a plan going forward. You know, I like loose plans. If I'm not doing a stitch along, I like a loose plan. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's fun to go and look at all of those things, see what you have. I didn't really pull anything different. What I did was I went through just mentally thinking about, oh, I want to try this. Oh, I want to try this. Because a lot of the things I'm trying this year are things I am trying. They're not things I've ever done before. I've never made a tomato. I've never made pears. I've never, that stuffed bunny, like the stuffed critter finish, uh, the Brenda Gervais one I did at Easter. I've never done that. The score news, I only started doing it at the end of last year, but I'm addicted. Um, obviously I'm going to have all the score news going on here for all seasons. Uh, but it's fun, right? It's just fun. There are a lot of things I want to stitch berries. I have a chart all kitted, so that one I need to stitch. I have several other berries I want to stitch as well. Um, I want to, oh, I stitched a scissor fob last year. That was a, or no, this year. That was earlier this year. And I'm going to kind of count that as a dimensional finish. And I know pillows are dimensional. Everything probably is dimensional. By, by dimensional, I just mean a non-traditional finish, I suppose. You know, not framed, not a flat finish, something, something you create different. I also want to do the pillow finish for like the block parties from Hands On Design, just all of that stuff. So God, you guys let me know. Would you like to see like an assortment of charts just to see what's out there? Um, I'm not going to have everything, obviously, but I'll show you what I've been drawn to, what I've collected and what's in my you know, chart library for me to pull from this year as I'm kind of drawn to that and it's kind of become a thing that I'm interested in doing. So let me know down in the comments because you guys were great. That was really, really fun for us to read last week to see what everybody was loving, um, what you guys thought I should stitch next. I loved it. We're going to do more of that because it was really, really fun to read what everybody said. All right, new start. So I did do a poll last week asking, I showed the rest of the pair charts I have for Manny B's asking what I should do. Um, I did a poll on YouTube. I did a poll in my Facebook group. Plus just, we kind of compiled and gathered the comments from YouTube and Blue Work Pairs did win. Um, some of you felt very strongly about red. <laughs> um, and really they got a lot of votes too. I did go ahead and start blue work pairs. Um, that's the one that won. So I did want to stitch the one that won. And I'll show you what I got started and then we're gonna talk about my plan going forward. I have a tiny start. This is just an hour worth of stitching. Um, I did start on the alphabet one. For some reason, I like starting on the alphabet one. Who knows why? I did mention last week, so I have the dinky dies, or I purchased the dinky dies. I've never used dinky dies before my pair projects. I used them for the green too. I am using this color. It's a silk floss. This is called Persian Jade, and I love it. And I am stitching mine on Color and Cotton 36 Count Travertine. I love this. I picked something from my stash. The called for was 35 count light khaki from Weeks Dye Works. I didn't have it, but I really felt like I could pick something from my stash. And I feel like this is a really close to the chart. And I think the Persian Jade looks gorgeous on it. So very happy with that choice. And I'll just hold that up. There is my stitching so far. You can see the variegation in the silk when I hold it up close. Super, super beautiful. I think um, I'm trying to work a lot on the seasonal Biscornu right now. Biscornu right now. This will be a focus as soon as I feel like I'm caught up <laughs> or where I want to be with all of that. I will work on doing these. So Blue Work Pairs 1, that is the one that I'm working on. Now, that doesn't mean we don't love our red work pairs and our Anjou pairs. So I do want to mention what I think I'm going to do for these. Here are both of these. I think the Anjou, the colors that it was, it's called, there's two called for colors in this one. 
I haven't even looked at the chart to see how they how it's charted to switch for switching because the rest are all one color. To me, these Anjou pears look very fallish. So these are going to be probably what I stitch after the blue work pairs simply so that I have them ready to go for this fall and to deck. Well, obviously they look fallish. Nicole, look, there's pumpkins. Good gravy, you guys. Anyway, so I will stitch these next so I can use them for fall decorating. I just keep it tucked in here. And then the red work pairs. I loved that someone left a comment saying these looked very cri Christmassy. You're so right. I am going to stitch these Christmassy uh, for Christmas decor, but obviously can be left out at any time. So um, that's kind of my plan. It's going to be blue work, Anjou, then red work. And I like it. You guys helped me kind of figure out my, my plan for this. And I appreciate it. And I'm really excited. So I kind of just keep all of these like this. I'm putting these back in the binder for now. I know where they are. I'll come back and get them. And that is it for new starts this week. Okay, let's go through the tomato charts that I have in my stash. And let's talk about possibilities of what I may stitch next. I think we're probably going to put a pull up. I'll see what you guys think and we'll go from there. So these are in no or particular order at all. I just literally went through, I have mine kind of organized by tomato charts. I, when I reorganized everything, I knew that I was going to do that so they would all be in one place. This is a new one from the Scarlet House called A Stitcher's Alphabet. I did pull this out into the tomato because to me this works great with tomato stitching. There's the cute little tomato in it. So that's the Scarlet House, A Stitcher's Alphabet. I will link all of these down below for you guys as well. Hands-on design has tons. Um, this is a tomato that comes in this chart. This is called my Stitcher's Heart. I think you can get this at 123 Stitch, but you can also get this from Kathy's website, handsondesign.biz. I will link it there down in the description. You make this box design. There's a tomato, there's a scissor fob, and then like a little waxer holder. I wanna stitch all of the things but this tomato, you guys, is the cutest thing ever. So cute. So um, also, I believe she, not I believe, she has a blog post, I think, that talks all about putting these things together. I think this, at one time, this was a class. A lot of Kathy's things have been classes. And then when they're not anymore, she brings them out and you can purchase the charts. So this is another hands-on design. This came out, I don't know, maybe a year ago. This is a vintage stitch to Hexi, and I love it. It has little tomatoes in it as well. Just absolutely adorable. Another one from my collection. This is the contender for what, in fact, it's not even in the, <laughs> it's not even in the sheet protector because I think this is what I want to stitch next. This is Brenda Gervais. Uh, uh, the Dutch tomato pin keep. It's dimensional. Of course I want to stitch this one next. So this is going to be, I'm going to set this one aside as one that I may work on. It does have the instructions for stitching that little strawberry as well. I did get the finishing kit from uh, Country Stitcher Online, Brenda Gervais' website. So I have like this velveteen and the wool and then the little wood base that I need to paint to finish this. But I think this is a contender. I, in fact, I had it out because I was reading the instructions the other evening because I think it's, it's what I want to do next. This also is not in a sheet protector because I want to stitch these. And so, these will be little quick stitches, a lot of them. Some of them may be a little bit more. My soul is fed with needle and thread is one that's kind of up there on my list of things. That's not really dimensional. I would make them pillows just like this. Um, but you get the instructions for stitching all of this. Oh, here's a better picture of it. 
this came out, I want to say two years ago, maybe, and was kind of all the rage. All of you, the floss tubers were stitching us. All of you stitchers were stitching this, but still a fantastic book. And if you're a tomato fan or you want these for your craft or sewing room, fantastic. So I'm going to put that with the contenders. Also, here is my other Brenda Gervais. It really goes great with her Keeper of the Pins book. I should have mentioned this is Keeper of the Pins, which is such a cute name. This is called I Collect, and it says Collector on it, and this is another chart that works perfectly with those. Then this was actually a start, and I did not love my fabric, and I have been influenced Carrie of Tiger Lily actually showed her whip of this. I don't think it's finished unless I've missed a recent video where she's finished. She swapped out her linen to pinks, to the background to be pink, and I think changed her floss because that's what Carrie does. I would like to kind of copy that, I think. I want to restart this. I want to stitch this. So this is also a contender for uh, what I might stitch next. Then this is not uh, a cross stitch chart, but I did get this from Brenda Gervais website, Country Stitches Online, and I wanted to mention it because I probably should have sewn this up when I was doing my other tomato. It's just the kit to make this little tomato. And it's really cute and fun. You get the fabric, but there's no stitching. You know what would be cute? I do think it might be cute to actually make that the little strawberry. You could cross stitch the little strawberry and add it to this or even get a little wool felted strawberry and add it. But anywho, so that's going in the things to do right away because that shouldn't take very long. This is a chart that is now out. We did get it at the pep rally retreat last year where hands on Kathy of hands on design was the designer. It's enjoy the stitch, which is kind of her saying, which I love. And this is something I really, I want to stitch all of these. So I'm, I'm going to quit saying that, but I love this. And this is in my tomato collection. I don't love the colors of this, and so I actually ha didn't buy it right away, but duh, you can change the colors. So that is probably what I'll do. This is the October House Fiber Arts chart uh, tomato, and maybe I like it more. Sometimes I don't like the colors in the photo. I would have to pull the colors and look at it, but um, I just thought it was super fun. And so that's a part of my tomato collection. And I think I only have one more in my particular tomato chart collection. I actually have this kitted, not with fabric. But um, this is Tiny Modernist, A Stitcher's Garden. And I was influenced by Emily of Primrose Cottage. And I believe they kitted this up because I have all the color and cotton floss in my bag uh, for this. She converted it to color and cotton. Yeah, it's all charted in weeks and classic color works with a DMC no yes with a DMC conversion as well so there's a lot of options here but she I think she's finished stitching this I've seen several of you stitch it and I want to frame this for the wall in here I think it's super cute and I keep meaning to start it and I just haven't they did a whole stitch along Nicole meant to start I know I probably shared it in a floss tube a long time ago didn't happen uh, but there's that one as well so that is my personal tomato chart collection. Um, I kind of, it was fun to go through all of them. Let's talk about the poll and what you guys, I think I'm just going to put it between two to start with and you guys tell me which one to do first. Okay. So, um, I'll ask you, you can leave it in the comments, but, um, I'll also put a poll up like I did last week because I am going to be ready to start a new one. I think we're going to make it between these two here. The Dutch Tomato Pin Keep and the Mend Block Party. And I am going to change colors for this, just an FYI. <laughs> um, I didn't like the linen I started on. I, I like the colors and everything. I just didn't like the linen I started on. And so I gifted that away as part of a giveaway. When I did my uh, whip parade 
a while back or after that. And so I don't even have my original anymore. So tell me if I should do the tomato pin keep or the mend block party. And whatever wins is what is the one I'll go with. How about that? Because that's fun. I really like that. I love that you guys voted last time and just know that eventually I'll get to all of these, I hope. And there probably will be more. <laughs> I'll probably add more to my stash. I love having a library. I know I've talked about this before. And my friend Chantal actually called it that one time, you know, don't feel bad about having charts because you have a pattern library. It means you can go to your library and when you feel like stitching a certain theme, for me, maybe dimensional things, or maybe it's pears, tomatoes, um, whatever. Whatever it is, however you organize it. And you can pull something from your library and start stitching, usually right then and there. So I, I love that. Um, that is it for uh, kind of the stitching portion of it. I have some haul things and some stitchy kindness and then some giveaways. Okay, quick little bit of haul today. First up, there are new charms available from Lori Holt. I picked these up at Fat Quarter Shop. These are adorable and I thought they would be perfect on all of my project bags and things. I just love her charms. I think they are amazing. So I got the sunflowers and the apple and these are all done by Riley Blake. So check those out if you are wanting some charms. My new labels from Sweetwater Company came. They're adorable this month. Look at that. Stitched with love. Cute little kite strings. And I get the, the little add-on, the tagged plus. So I get extras. They also have a new um, club that is called Stitched for embroidery. embroidery. I, that's easy to say. And so they did send a little sample. I don't really do embroidery. I love the look of it, but that's, I, I'm going to keep that. I may give it a try. They have some super cute things coming. My Fine Floss Club came. This month's colors are Peacock. This is NPI Silk Threads. And I do belong to this club at Fat Quarter Shop. Beautiful colors. Then... Um, I actually, okay, let's talk about this first. I was purchasing this. This has been on my wish list for a year. Uh, my friend, paper, my fellow paper crafter, Wanda, she stitched this last year, I believe, and it was beautiful. And so it's been on my wish list and I just never had purchased it. So I did pick it up and stay tuned. Talk about a little bit more about that later. I'm kidding all of this up though. Uh, for a patriotic stitching start. Absolutely love it. This is Annie B's American Sampler House. I love the house. I love the letters in the side of the house. And I wish I would have bought it last year. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, I let somebody kind of talk me out of it. And I it's been on my wish list and it keeps going in and out of my cart. So thank you, Jessica, for <laughs> reminding me. Then while I was over buying that chart, I actually feel like I saw somebody stitch this and I had to have it. I've also looked at this for over a year. When did this one come out? 2019. Yeah, it's been out a while. And I, I was in that mood where I just bought the charts as I was just talking about having a chart library. So I picked up Plum Street Samplers Summer Delivery. And then this is not for me. But I have a dear friend who helps me out with uh, our Facebook group and things, and she saw this in a video. I asked Kathy Hoberman, uh, is this going to come out at some point? I figured it was probably a class kit. Somebody had picked this up. Uh, I haven't seen the, the original video, but my friend, Shari, saw this and said, do you know anything about this? I asked Kathy. She told me, yes, that was a class I did at the Silver Needle in Tulsa. You can see if they still have any kits. And so I reached out. They had one left. So remember the cute little hexes, the stitching hexes I just showed you for tomatoes? This is harvest hexes. I 
didn't even really want to show this too badly because I got the last one at Silver Needle. It will be released at some point. There is not a set date, but um, this is going to my friend for her birthday. So I'm not even keeping this. I will be looking forward to this coming out as well because I, you guys know me. I love all things pumpkin harvest. So um, again, this super, super cute. And thank you to the Silver Needle for, I called, they sent it out right away. Okay. So I really am not doing retreats this year. <laughs> Uh, any more retreats. I, I did do one this year. I have a lot of work obligations and all of that good stuff. And the one retreat I wanted to go to, I'm actually going on a family vacation, so I couldn't go to that one, which is Stitch West in the fall. Uh, so I, I couldn't go to that. And I had no plans to do anything. But a one-day class came up, which if you watched my interview with Kathy of Hands-On Design, she mentioned it, but she's teaching it in North Carolina, close to where Shari lives, but Shari is actually going to be at a girls weekend where we go to the lake and just hang out and stuff um, when Kathy's gonna be there teaching that class this summer. And so she wasn't gonna get to go. Well, when I did the interview with Kathy, she mentioned that she was teaching this one day class in South Dakota in, late, in early August, Mid, mid August. I'll put the information information down below because I think there's still open seating. It's not the full class because this is only a one day class, but I can I can drive it. It's it's a drive, but our friend group is actually going to go. And uh, since then, I've heard from some, several of you. Um, Janaska has reached out to me. She's going to go. Um, and so I know several people who are going now, but I know that there is still room or Kathy told me there was still room in the class. So let's just do a quick little unboxing and I'll show you what I got for the pre-stitch, which I need to work on. Now, I when she's teaching this other places, it, pro it does come with extra pieces, but... Um, this is what we're stitching. And a, yes, it is a tomato. We're going to do a pre-stitch for the tray and the tomato. And here's what you get. All of the things are beautiful. Oh yeah, see here. It's gonna be in Beresford, South Dakota. Um, and Shanty Stitchers is putting this on. And I got the linen to stitch on, of course. These are the projects that we are pre-stitching and then we will finish them in the class. So, uh, really excited. I'm going to this in August. Again, it's not a really a retreat. It's a one day class and there are still uh, openings available for that. I just wanted to share in case anybody else wants to go to an awesome finishing class by Kathy. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about stitchy kindness slash haul than stitchy kindness only. Okay, from Chantal's 141 Design, the Annie Keepers Floss Organizing System came. So this is a system that I will be using for DMC. It comes with all these clear floss drops. You purchase the labels, um, they're pre-printed, you put them on there, and you can organize all your DMC very, very easily. These you slide your floss on, check out Chantal's video. I'll link it down below. But you slide it on and it will go in file cabinets or file drawers or a file keeper or whatever. Really, really cool. So awesome. That is Annie's Keepers. Then we're gonna show some of you front facing and then we'll turn it around. Chantal sent me an on the ledge. This is one of her new designs. It's a long skinny board, which is super, or board, like tray and board, really cute. And she's shown lots of different things on her uh, Wednesday shop talk as well as her channel. So check that out. But that is the On The Ledge. And it's a companion to On The Edge, which is this the small version. And then for our seasonal Biscornia sal, the risers two pack came. So this is what it looks like. 
and you create risers out of it that you can display your biscornos on. I am going to paint mine, and also it comes with the little etched lines in it. But I'm going to paint mine for Wednesday night stitch with me so you can see that. And then you put these little round wood feet on it, like so. Let's just show how one of them looks, shall we? Obviously they're not glued, so this might be kind of janky. <laughs> Let's do this. Pretend I've glued it all together. I will glue it together for Wednesday evening. But then you can put it on here and display it. Now, obviously, it's not attached yet, but see how it's a riser. So if you want to set this in your trays or on shelves, mantles, I talked a little bit about this last week. I linked to it. These are awesome. And you can color, you can paint it any color you want. They're two for $15, so it is a great deal. Um, and just paint them up. Have a lot of fun with it absolutely love these love 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 and i love that they work so well with the cell that's going on so thank you so much to chantal for sending those my way and run over and get yours placed so that you are ready for displaying and oh that reminds me i did have a question wednesday night about permanently adhering your biscornu to these i'm not I am using this as a wood piece that I literally can switch things out on. So if I have a drum that I want to put on here, if I have um, a stand-up critter, if I have a candle, whatever I want to put on here, basically. It, little houses, like if you do little villages and houses, I love these for creating different heights in my displays, no matter what I'm decorating with, and I love them. So, uh that was a question and I definitely wanted to answer that. The rest of my stitchy kindness. Um, I had a viewer who mailed me, these are ribbon organizers from Amazon. I will link them down below because these are what I use to store my ribbon. She's had a couple of them. They did not work for her. And so she wanted to give them to me because she knows I love them. And what's funny is I actually was needing to order another one. So thank you so much. Um, to Linda, I think, who sent these, um, and I appreciate it. So thank you. Um, okay, the rest of these I'm going to show this way. So I also got a card from, from Maureen, and it's beautiful. And she included some money to help, like, with shipping and things. Maureen, thank you. Look at that. Is this not beautiful? I love the white die cuts against that soft embossed and stenciled background. This is stunning. What an elegant design. So, so sweet of you, Maureen. Thank you. And then my friend Pat and Rascal George sent a lovely note. Thank you so much, Pat, for that. And she sent a beautiful card. Look at that. This is an embossing folder that I believe she painted. It's so pretty. And she sent me some stamps to help with mailing out prizes. That is so wonderful. Thank you so much for that. And then my friend Shari, who I hope is not just, she's probably laughing at me. I'm going to get a text. Because I said I just started working on this. It's supposed to be my monthly stitch. And I, I need to get that finished. Shari sent me the next three in the Little House Needleworks Sheet Virtues. I mean, I'm so far behind at this point. It's hilarious. Um, and then look at the card she sent. Shari works for Lawn Fawn. Um, they are an awesome paper crafting company. And this is one of my favorite cards. So when I opened this and saw that she made me this, you guys, or sent this one to me, I am thrilled. So look how cute that snail is with all of the bobbins and the thimble. It is the cutest. I just have to talk her up. Please give Shari a follow. She has a wonderful floss tube series. She does some fun things with her sister, who also her sister Stacy, who's also a stitcher. And then she is an amazing paper crafter. So, um, so adorable. Thank you, Shari. I love you. Can't wait to see you here in a few weeks. And that is it for my stitchy mail this week. 
Okay, so Binzi Design sent me some amazing new goodies for felt stitching, which I'm going to have a lot of, just saying, coming up this year. Um, but they sent me an amazing stuffing tool. They sent me some bags and they sent uh, their needle minder, which I am sharing right now. Um, but they also have their t-shirts readily available. So if you want a cute stitching t-shirt, I've had mine for a little while, but they are readily available for colorways. I feel like their unisex sizing fits true to size. I'm wearing a large, um, if that helps anybody at all. And watch, or I'm gonna show all of those new things. Thank you to Crystal and to Binzi Design for sending me those. I love them. So Stitchy Kindness, Stitchy Mail. I am wearing, this isn't actually part of the kindness, but I did want to show this to you guys. I know a lot of you have probably seen it. Let me get it on right. Um, this is the Binzi Design Rainbow Stitch Tee, and they are selling it right from their website. I did put a link down in the description below. Um, they have it available in four colors. The design is the same no matter the color, but it's super cute and fun and perfect for all of us stitchers. So I just wanted to show you guys that. I'm also going to flip the camera around. I'm going to show you some new products they sent me. So if you are a felt stitcher like I am, um, you might want to check some of these out. So let's go take a look at it. Okay. So um, I actually unpackaged this on Instagram. So it's not as cute as it once was. I wanted to show you the needle minder that came in here. So this is like the little Binzi design storefront. They also have this available in a needle, uh, an enamel pin, pardon me. This is the needle minder, but they have it in an enamel pin as well. And I'm actually going to stitch the, or stitch. Oh my goodness. Stick it on my display, which I did share on Instagram this past week as well. Um, if you want to see how I display it, I just copied Shari Moss's idea of how she displays hers and it's really cute. Okay. You guys, the stuffing tool, it is just swirl stuffing on crown tip. Crown grabs hold of stuffing stuff hard to reach places. If you like to stuff all the cute little bitty things as we do, this tool is a must. I am going to try it out and I will do a video on it soon. Look how beautiful this tool is. This is super nice. I've been using like the chopstick thing that comes in a polyester fiber fill. So I am super excited to use this. It's a beautiful tool. And then lastly, they sent these cute project bags. So what's awesome is they are, they, they, blah, blah, I still can't talk. They do have a zipper. Here's some felt. I'm actually working on something. So, um, I mean, I probably wouldn't, well, I might, you can put the whole rolls of felt if you have rolls or sheets, whatever you have. But then the small one, you could like tuck your tools and things in. So you can tuck your tool, your needle minder, let's say you have some floss and your needles and stuff. You could tuck it in there so it doesn't get into your project. Tuck that down inside and then you're ready to go. So really, really fun. Thank you to Benzie Design for sending these fun things for me to show you guys. Um, and I'm sure you're going to be seeing all of these used. Really, really love all of this and I'm probably most excited about this guy right here. Very excited about that. So again, all of this is from Binzi Design. And don't forget to get your cute little rainbow stitchy tee. Giveaway time. Okay, I don't have new giveaway winners to announce this week because I actually skipped a week of giveaways in there. I do still have some outstanding giveaways, so that will scroll at the end. I've updated. I've sent out anybody that I've heard from. I've sent out. Um, if you're still listed on there, I did not get an email from you, so maybe email me again. Um, but I have some giveaways for you guys today. Please, please be a U.S. resident. Please like the video. Please be a subscriber of my channel. I know we did a big subscriber push to get to 100K. I would like to do another subscriber push because 
I want to do something fun. There was something that I wanted to give away that I forgot because I don't make them to sell <laughs> um, that I would like to do when maybe we get to 110,000. Do you guys know what that maybe is that I said I would give away? I forgot. And then I was thinking the other day, I was like, oh my word, Nicole, duh. <laughs> I have a lot of those moments, a lot. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun? So subscribe. Basically, I'm saying if you like what you see here, subscribe to my channel. Um, I do quite a few videos every week. Some are paper crafting, some are floss tubes, some are tutorials for stitching, for quilting. I have more of those coming up. I would love for you to be a subscriber to my channel. Uh, and hit that notification bell because it does tell you when I'm going live, when I have a new video, all of that good stuff. So today's giveaways. I'm going to do keywords today. I don't, I sometimes I do numbers, sometimes I do keywords. You can put down anything you're interested in. I will put across the screen what you need to write in your comment to be considered. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'm going to flip my camera around. I have a pile of stuff. A pile. All right. So the first thing, I have three opportunities. These are all physical products, so I do ask that you be a U.S. resident only. These are three cottage garden threads flosses. I had extras from when I purchased these. You, they do come from Australia, so when I purchased, I purchased quite a few different things, and um, I have several to give away. Now, this is candy cane. It was used in that blue flower biscornu from the Jingle Ball class, and they came back out with a very, very limited edition skein of this. It sold out. They said they're not making any more. Um, I have one of these. I These are available as far as I know. They're rainbow. They're amazing. Um, I, I'm going to do something with mine, and I'll show you that because I did get one for myself. So I have three opportunities for these. Please put rainbow or candy cane in your comment to win these. So there will be three winners and I will send you these awesome, I'll send you uh, the one of your choice. Rainbow or candy cane. Then I somehow dumbly <laughs> purchased an extra of this Brenda Gervais chart, key to my heart. This came out this past February, I believe, into January, February. So put a uh, key, the word key in your comment, and I will choose a winner for that next week. And then I have, this is a completely random, you guys, assortment of fabric and I'm gonna send it to you. Now, some of these are scraps. These are all Luganas. This is a black, like, it's or Lugana or Jobelin. We have some black. We have little bits of, I don't even know what color this is. I should, but I don't. Like, if you're doing little ornaments or buttons or things, I have little scraps of that. I have a little bit of the prim left over. I don't even know how much is in here. Oh, this is a pretty good piece actually. Uh, so I have some of this, but this is for my even weave Lugana stitchers. Uh, I kind of cleaned out some things that I wasn't going to stitch with. And then I have this fabric flare even weave. This is called Stormy Gray Dyed Effect. This is 28, 25. I want to say that this is 25 and that this is 25. Then I also have some Picture This Plus. This is Tarnish. I did stitch a little bit, a little corner out of this one. This is 28 or 32. I don't know what the tag is missing. It may be 32. I don't really know. This is Picture This Plus. This is Phoenix 28 Count Lugana from Picture This Plus. I did start stitching something in the corner and I didn't like it and I didn't rip it out. But I'm not going to. I figured if I'm doing a giveaway, you can either cut it out or rip it out. But it's a big piece. I only stitched that little corner. Uh, perfect for some tomato stitching, just saying. 
And this is some shale. Picture this plus 28 count Lugana. Yeah, nothing on this one. Okay, so Lugana bundle. Put Lugana in your comment if you would like to win this. And then this already is all bagged up, but no one ever claimed it. So we're giving it away again. And you guys, it's an awesome quilting bundle. So put quilt as your comment. I'm going to show all of it again. It's a bunch of stuff. And I'm going to even add one new thing from that, this month's fat uh, sew sampler in it. Flosses, but these alone. We have the Henry Glass Quilt Grace by Kim Deal Jelly Roll. We have a Lori Holt Jelly Roll, even if you just want the fabric. We have the thread cutter. We have a ruler, some needles, all kinds of charts, you guys. A lot of these are exclusive to Sew Sampler boxes. Uh, June Taylor Kit. I'm going to include this month's June Taylor Kit in here as well. All kinds of stuff. So if you would like this, use the word quilt in your comment because I would really love that to go to a home and bless somebody who wants these quilting goodies. So um, those are my giveaways this week. So four different things, but what, seven opportunities? Because the first one, I'm going to give those threads away to three different viewers. So um, leave the keywords. Tell me if I should do the tomato pin keep or the mend block party. Um, let me know if you want me to share some dimensional finishes. We are going to talk about patriotic stitching coming up. Um, thank you guys, as always, for spending a part of your day with me. I appreciate you all so, so much. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video with another stitchy or quilty friend if you haven't already. Um, we're going to do something fun for my 110,000 subscriber giveaway. I think that'll be the next milestone. I like having milestones to work for. So that's what we're going to do. Thank you, as always, for spending part of your day with me. I hope you all have a wonderful stitchy week. I will see you all Wednesday evening for Stitch With Me, even if you aren't stitching the seasonal Biscornu. Um, even if you're stitching something else to make into a Biscornu, come hang out with us, even if you aren't doing a Biscornu and that is not your jam, but you just want to hang out while we're stitching, come hang out. We have a blast in the chat. We talk about all kinds of good stuff. Um, I find out things. You guys find out things. We help each other. Um, it's a wonderful community and I appreciate you all. Have a wonderful week and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone. this video please subscribe to my channel click that like button and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time